we need to have a real conversation about the multiverse and how it screws up stakes and true quality storytelling. Let's get it. So look, man, um, hmm, um, Doctor Strange. Look, I didn't like the, the movie. So this is this is spoiler, 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 spoiler. So we're going to really get into detail and really break down this whole Doctor Strange thing. Look, I didn't like the film because this is not a good film. I don't care what anyone says. This is not a good film because I'm not going to sort of give excuses because, okay, it's an MCU. It's MCU. No. Story, pacing, acting structure and so forth these are still important hallmarks of what makes a good film iron man one is a good film first avenger winter soldier civil war those are good films get into the galaxy one that's a good film those are good films in and of themselves you know so Doctor strange 2 it ain't it bro it ain't it but let's break things down because I've, I've got all the characters here and so forth so let's just first start with the title guy dr strange um Bennett Cumberbatch is a really good actor, as most English guys have. He is a very good actor. Let's just say that he is a very, very good actor. You know, um, from because I first saw him in Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy with Gary Oldman. I think Colin Firth was in there as well. John Hurt, who I met, legend and so forth. He's a very good actor. This film didn't do him any favors, and I'll tell you why. Where they could have gone. Because there's something they could have done to have really brought out a Benedict Cumberbatch in a, in his fold, but I just felt that he was almost like the he was, he was one of the most boring characters in this film. Like the acting was fun and everything, but his character didn't really evolve. Did really push his character into interesting ways. Look at um, Captain America. Look at how different he was in um, First Avenger to Winter Soldier. You really saw how different he was and how much he had to advance in Winter Soldier as opposed to what he did in the first Captain America. Like it was okay, this this is really interesting, man. So, but the same ends with Doctor Strange, man. Um we're throwing out to Benedict Cumberbatch, like Doctor Strange just he like did he did the character evolve in this film? Or was all he was doing just reacting to situations? just being the protagonist of like, okay, I need to go to here, to here, to here. So it was literally like he was a vacuum, kind of like a vacuum you would, you would use in a, in a video game. Okay, I need to now go to this point and I need to go to this point. Oh, I need to now solve this and everything. But there is nothing internal within the character that was growing. They tried to do it with his relationship with his wife, Christina, or so forth, but that, but it, it was so surface and it was, and it was suffocated by all the demons and all the kind of crazy horror stuff that was happening that i just felt like his his character didn't really grow and that's the worst thing you can do especially in a sequel one of the first things you're doing in a sequel apart from okay making things bigger better and advancing is the character needs to advance and the character needs to be taken to a new interesting direction look at new and reloaded in the kind of crazy choice that he had to make and the his vision he was having of trinity look at luke skywalker in empire strikes back with the visions that he has of darth vader and ultimately what he has at the very very end your protagonist has to be taken to a new plateau and challenged in the sequel it just seemed as if oh this is just yet another adventure and i just solved it and then boom he, nothing deep happened to him no he didn't really change look at um cap in the second film the second film is like, oh damn all what I believed in with the America, USA, were all good. No, I now have to now go as an as an indi individual and now pretty much now go against this kind of um, paradigm of the US that I believed in. So that was the key thing there. Look, th and I'll get into what they should have done, but she was the villain. I don't think I'd have chosen her as a villain. I'll tell you, I tell you what they should have done as a villain. I wouldn't have chosen her, but she was a villain. She was good. Let me get this straight. Maybe I'm confused. So her motivation was I want to be with my I want to have a family. 
So the villain of this film, the villain, the evil person in this film is, I want to have a family. I want to be a mother. And I don't care what's getting in my way of me wanting to be a mother of my kids. As far as the villain motivation goes, um, it's it's pretty thin. It's pretty thin because as I was watching, I was going to say, okay, so what is so her motivation is that she just wants to be the, <laughs> a mother of her kids, and you're just doing crazy extreme things to be a mother of your kids. I'm like, okay, fine. So as a villain, for me, it's it, it's it's I just wasn't feeling it, bro. I I I wasn't feeling it. This isn't the same as um I was with the Winter Soldier. Or, or even with Thanos initially and on so forth. So for me, nah, like Elizabeth Olsen is a decent actress. She's decent and I think she did a decent she she, she did a good job. Because she's a good actor. She is a good actor. And she did she she did her, her job. I just thought that the writing and so forth for me, I just didn't really the villainy you know, of her didn't really sell me. It didn't really sell me. And I just think that once your villain is really popping off in your film, is an issue. So once your protagonist hasn't advanced from the first film, and once I don't really feel like if the villain is someone who you should really be fearful of because of what they want to do and how they're doing it, I'm like, because, I mean, I get it. Like, she was crazy in how she was breaking things down, but I was like, <laughs> it just, it just... <laughs> Her motivations just seemed a little bit thin and not really that frightening in terms of oh what she could potentially do, man. So, um, hold on, let me. Just, just, there we go. Sorry, so yeah, get 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 the So, and what do we have next, man? Actually, no, let's let's do this. <sighs> America Chavez, look, she's fourteen. I believe she's just fourteen. Super young. She she, she was fine, but I think that. Maybe this is where the film should have been longer because um, it just because even when the film starts, this is my issue with the film, bro. The film just starts with them in a multiverse. Like, whoa, what was happening? And you couldn't even develop her character. Like, all we knew was that oh, she had some parents, and then something happened, and then her parents got taken to another universe or something. And she's such a crucial part of the story because she is the link between other universes. And I'll tell you why I have an issue with that. So it's very important because she links into other universes and so forth. But I just it just felt a bit thin. You know, personally for me, it just felt her character just felt a little bit thin and not really that very well developed. Personally for, for me. That's what I'm just talking about me. Personally for me, it just she just did not feel really that well developed as a character, man. Um and they could have really I just felt that the chemistry between her and Doctor Strange wasn't strong enough because I know what they were going for of like, you know, the young kid with all these powers with Doctor Strange, but it just felt again, it, it just felt very surface level. And I think just the character just seemed very like whatever. Whereas like, this was a very key character. And I think this the issue with this film is that the characters were, were very weak, man. And when you're making films, especially of this ilk, it's important in any film, but even films of this ilk, your characterizations have to be, 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 be very key. The motivations, what they want to do, and how they and, and how they operate, man. So for the America Shivers, I was like, eh. it was weak, man. It was weak. So let's not get into real spoiler territory now. And this is now the issue I now have with this whole multiverse thing. So I was watching a review, and one of the guys on this review, he says, oh, man, you know, um, he's like, fuck, man, like, um, it's, it's, it's so crazy because um, people who you love, you see people who you love and care for die. And I'm sure he was referring to this. So uh, Mr. Fantastic, what's it, Reed Richards, you know, um, what's it called, the... Captain, the basically the freaking basic female captain. Is it Captain Carter, Captain Carter, and and, and so forth, and um, Black Bolt. And this is almost my my issue with um, Infinity War. How am I supposed to be sad that these guys got clapped? It's a, it's a it's an alternate universe. All you need to do is just go to another universe and find them. Remember, I think our universe is what six one six. I think. This was universe eight one one seven. Okay, they died. So what? 
that's just one of several universities that have the other iterations of these freaking dudes. So you can just go to another university and just find another iteration of these dudes. So there are no stakes here. Because even as they died, I'm like, okay, they died, but they died in this uni universe. <laughs> they are um, there may be there may be another Captain Marvel in another universe. There may be another Captain Carter in another, in another universe. And it's happened so quickly. It was so quick and so fast. I was like, uh, okay, because we didn't even get time to know them. Because again, we can't just be like, oh man, because we know what they are. No, no, no. We may know them from comic books and we may infer things based on our background of them from the comics, but you've not done the groundwork of actually um allowing us to really care for them and really connect connect with them. You've not really done done, done that groundwork. Unless keep it real. So look, this was the best this was the best moment in the entire film. Like I say, this I didn't like this film. I was not a fan, but I said, you know what? Okay, I'll I'll give you this. When they played that X Men theme song, I was like, "Oh, okay, okay." But it's like it's, but that's just being cheap. See, that has nothing to do with the quality of the film. That was just a fan thing. That was just a fan thing, and obviously he was he had his his yellow thing. So this was purely a fan thing. I was like, "Okay, all right, cool." But yeah, look, it was the it was the best part of the whole film when they did that. But let's keep it real. So we all love Professor X. We especially love Professor X from the X-Men films played by Patrick Stewart. So when Scarlet Witch snaps his neck and so forth. Okay. <laughs> we saw him for a few seconds, and it's just another freaking universe. So I'm sure there's another universe that has another freaking Professor X. So the issue with this multiverse is there's no jeopardy. Because when high stakes are, when they go, they're gone. You can't bring them back and you can't go to another alternative to find another alternative version of them. Because my danger with this whole multiverse thing is that if the MCU really hits a roadblock, they just say, oh, let's go to universe um four five six to get another iron man who somehow looks like robert Downey jr let's go to universe three two four to get another captain america who just happens to look like chris evans and then we can reset the whole thing and like hey guys hey remember the the, the guys that built this whole thing they're now back in an alternate version but they're now back and for me that's just cheap <laughs> because it cheapens what we saw from endgame from both cap and iron man but I, my fear is I believe that that may happen. Um, I'm not going to get towards the whole thing. He's been wasted. Chiwetel Ejiofor, Nigeria. Chiwetel Ejiofor is a very good actor. He's a very good actor. And after the first film, I thought what we saw that, oh, this guy's going to be a villain. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, he's going to be the villain of, of, this, of this piece. And that is where I just think the issue is because your first film and second film, there should be a connective tissue there. How has he in, how has he evolved from the first film to this film? And I think this is the issue with this whole MC and everything interconnecting. Because what more what I saw was a really good actor, so a really good a, a potential really good character who could have potentially be a really good villain based on how much he knows of Doctor Strange, was totally lost within this massive cloud of the MCU and overarching storyline. But again, this is a damn good actor, a quality, quality actor who was just wasted. He, he came in, or I'm in an alternate place, or I'm not part of the Illuminati, I want to not take a vote. They have a small skirmish, and he's gone. So, so you've wasted a potentially interesting character and a damn good actor. So for me, I was like, oh, I mean, give me a break, bro. Um, Look, Sam Raimi is a unique director because I, th I think i've seen i'm not sure that i've seen evil dead so i think it's a, I, I saw evil dead dead one and i was like wow this guy is a talent this guy is a talent and he brought some of those his um his quality from evil dead into this the so this one i couldn't say the non-spoiler there was a scene where i think scarlet which is trying to get in so wanda's house and then you see it all go quiet 
and then you see like I think there's one time when like you see like a teacup full of like tea and then it's weird how it does it where it's like it's look it's not like CGI it almost feels like real and like animatronics where you like see the water move but it moves in a kind of weird realistic stop motion kind of way I'm like oh wow like because for me I'm like anti CGI unless it stays it's unless it stays at the art so how he sort of did that sequence that felt like old school horrors. Like, oh no no no, this is cool. And there were some sequences that really felt okay. This is a guy imprinting his style upon this. But I just felt that the it's the the ultimate overarching thing was MCU 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 MCU. And I think that his vision may have been a little bit lost within everything. Rather, than, I don't think he was given just full rinse, but like just go full out because I still believe that. So Scott Derrickson, who did the, the first film. He was the guy that said, oh no, I want to now make this a horror movie movie. And he left because of creative differences. So my, because for me, this was a MCU horror movie. This was not a full-on horror movie. And I think that would have been interesting. Like, okay, make a full-on horror movie. But think about it. Are you really going to make a full-on horror movie where kids have to come and watch? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, because MCU is going to appeal to the freaking kids. So... I would have loved to see what Scott Derrickson would have done if he was given full reign, because I think he would have gone full on horror. Um, so here's my thing. This should have been the villain. This should be the main villain. I think what you could have had is, um, he could have been a side, I think if, you know how you can have to, win, so he could have been like an initial villain maybe for like the first 15, 30 minutes or so forth. But I think the main villain should have been this. You're dealing with the multiverse, different alt iterations. And maybe this is one messed up Doctor Strange who now wants to maybe control all the several universes and so because he now wants to, no, 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 he can leap. He now wants to now leap across several universes and just really F things up and have full power of several universes. And by things, by opening it up and allowing this psychopath to now start to travel between multiverses, it now messes things up. And you have now have a situation where he comes into our universe, which I think is 616, and starts crazy messing things up. And it's now Doctor Strange against Doctor Strange, so he's fighting against himself, but a much more craftier, mad, more psychopathic version of himself. Because what you now have is a very good actor in Ben to come back really allowed to express himself because he's not acting as two people right now so he can really get into his evil bag and that now brings out something more of his good doctor strange but of him now having to face him and maybe have a situation again stakes go to his universe evil doctor strange probably ends up killing christine like his um former girlfriend which now really pushes doctor strange to 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 the edge against you're adding stakes here and you're not seeing the what the effects of opening up the multiverse is things like this can happen. <laughs> you know, you can now somehow allow someone from a crazy universe comes into your universe and you now have to deal with them now. And they can just F things up. That's what I think would have been a far better storyline that I've kept the whole Doctor Strange thing intact. Because the Scarlet Witch was just <laughs> It was deviating so much with Wonder Vision, and she's super strong and powerful. I was like, oh, no, so that's where I think they they should have gone with it, man. Um, people don't accept it. I will try to convince people don't accept it. You're never gonna reach the heights of these dudes. You know, this was the heights of MCU, and the reason for that is of course, Colin Batch is a good actor. So it's Elizabeth Olsen and so forth. For Robert Downey Jr., that was just a dream role because Cumberbatch and Olsen, they don't have the charisma of Downey Jr. First of all, Downey Jr. is a damn good actor. That's pretty. The guy's a damn good actor. Go watch Chaplin. He's a damn good actor. Go watch Chaplin and um, I, think it's, it's, I think it's Swimming with Sharks. Was he in Swimming with Sharks? I think, I think it's Swimming with, 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 with Sharks where he plays an agent. I think it's that. Is that Swimming with Sharks or is it the player? It might be Swimming with, with Sharks. Yeah, it might be. Um... He's a very, very good, good, good actor. Even, uh, what's it called? Um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. So, coolest actor, but amazing charisma. And what he did with the Iron Man role was amazing. Like, he made that role his own, and that was just an amazing character. An amazing character that has had everything to do with Downey Jr. 
Chris Evans, not the greatest actor, decent, but not the greatest actor, dream role. He was made for that role. And I just think that, again, it goes back to character. There were such well-defined, well-drawn characters that they were, this was a strong foundation for the MCU. There was a, so, so because you really cared for their characters. So once they went from the end game, no one has replaced them. I mean, what, what's Thor? That bomber Spider-Man, look, freaking Tom Holland Spider-Man, he needed freaking Tobey Maguire and Andrew, Andrew Garfield to freaking help him and so forth. So, and I think for the MCs, you have to understand, forget the CGI, the TV shows, the bells and whistles. You can never go beyond good characters. You have to do you know, the bread and butter. The bread and butter, the, the, the groundwork is good characters. Good, strong characters that people can connect with and good, simple, effective storytelling. Once you now start going crazy with all these bells and whistles and mad stuff and you lose sight of just, okay, is, do I care about this character? How well drawn is this character? You lose sight and the MCU, I just think that they've not been able to replicate or even come close to what they did with Cap and Iron Man, you know? So, and just look for... I mean, as I said again, I'm not here to tell you to hate the MCU. If you love the MCU, that's on you. I told you, Cable Guy, I think, is the funniest film of all time. Not everyone thinks so. I think Office Space is one of the funniest films of all time. No one thinks so. I think Predator is a masterpiece. Not everyone thinks so. So, I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm just saying just for me, storytelling is important. Character is important. Film structure is important. This whole thing of like, this means this because this connects with this and this will not have plans for the whole thing. That means nothing to me. So, because Kevin Feige says, oh, who has plans for the next 10 years? That means nothing for me. All I care about is, is this a good film? I don't give a damn about how this connects to this or how this connects to that. That means nothing to me. I've not seen Captain Marvel and I never will. I've not seen Ant Man 2 and I never will because I watch a trailer. If the trailer is good, I'll watch it. So I must invest in this whole MCU. I must see everything. I must see the freaking What If series <laughs> because I'm like, okay, that's not interesting. Show me your trailer and then I'll see your film. So for me, you have the core is making a good film. But I think the issue you have now is rather than the focus being on making a good film is how does this connect with the wider picture of what we, we want to do? Because for Scott Derrickson, he was like, bro, I want to make a horror movie. Forget about I have a particular vision for a horror movie which is very different from everything else in the MCU. I'm sure Kevin Feige was like, I'm sorry, this doesn't fit with the larger vision of what we want. Who knows? Maybe Scott Derrickson would have been like, I want to make Mordor like the Chiwetel Ejiofor. I want to make him the main villain. He probably would have, I think he would have probably made him the main villain. Or evil Doctor Strange. Because he probably would have, I may be wrong, but I think he would have done what I've done either. Churchill Joffa as the main villain or Evil Doctor Strange as the main villain, he wouldn't have had Scarlet Witch. Because he was like, we need to connect with the first film and build upon what we saw in the first film. And this would be much more of a connective tissue. So, yeah, man, I mean, I just, for me, as I said again, I'm a, I'm, I'm a film guy. And for me, with when it comes to film, you have to do the bread and butter. You have to get the, you have to get the bread and, but, and butter written. And, and, and I just feel that, what I'm just seeing, like, even whether it's, like, the TV shows or these films, like, guys, Thor, no, 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 no. So, for me, like, I mean, I don't, like, I'm checked out. I'm checked out. I'm, I'm waiting to see what Jim Cameron is doing in Pandora. But with this MCU thing, I'm, ch I'm checked out because, I mean, I can't watch stuff that is just trying to um, look beyond just the fundamentals of filmmaking and just trying to just tell this larger, bigger story. It's... It's cool. It's a great idea because I read comics and we all know the comics of whether it's Marvel versus DC and how this comic, oh, comic sagas or even cartoon saga. I remember the um, cartoon saga with, what's it called, Spider-Man and the, and the seven villains and so forth from the TV show. So those sagas are cool. and It's great how you're interconnecting films. It's, a, it's an amazing thing across different mediums. But at the end of the day, is this a good film? I don't give a damn about how it connects with this and so forth. That means nothing to me. Is this a good film? Does it have a good story? Does it have good characters? Does it tell a story well? How good is the, the, the plot? How good is the pacing? And for this film, it's just a collection of scenes from one point to one point to one point. So at the very end, I'm like, 
What did I learn from the film? How did Doctor Strange grow in this film? What was the big impact in this film? How has he evolved? How has he evolved or devolved? How has he changed? What has affected him? What has happened to him in, in this film? Not much. Not much. So that's where I'm with it, man. So guys, remember, man, um, join the Discord. There, on the, there, there's a pinned comment below. On, on, on the pinned comments, join the movie chat Discord and talk about this movie. MC Chat Spoiler. Just talk, talk about movie movies in general man talk about movies in general man and maybe if you have another view join me on the on the discord and um tell me what, what, what you think do you agree do you disagree let's let's, let's have a chat I'm, I'm i love having movie discussions and so forth let's have a chat as to dr strange the mc and all that beautiful amazing stuff man but guys i will see you on the other one peace out stay true and stay real guys